Hello, everybody. Nice to see you to my talk, Lightweight Pass for Jenkins CI Environment with Docker. First, some words about me. Um, my name is Josef Fuchsuber. I'm working as a software engineer at QA Work GmbH in Munich. We are a custom software company, still growing, um, five years old, six years old, and our main customers are leading companies in Germany in automotive and telco industry. Most of my time, I work in, in uh, several projects at our customers, and my hobby and uh, the, the remaining time, I'm managing the software development tool stack at uh, QAware. And Jenkins is one of the biggest part in it. Okay, let's start with some words about the agenda. I have uh, s three parts today. The first is a brief introduction to Docker. Um, I see a lot of people here. Uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of people here already know Docker, use Docker in uh, testing development or in perhaps production environment. But um, important is here, brief introduction. Everybody in this room should have no after this part the, the, the same base knowledge of Docker. 10 minutes, 50 minutes, and a little, little, little demo. Um, if there are Docker experts, they can Twitter or, or going to, to, to drink a, a coffee and come back in 10 minutes. Um, the second part is the first integration with, with, with Jenkins as um, dynamic build slaves. Um, you heard in the morning, um, Kuzuke said on-off slaves. Um, I say dynamic build slaves uh, with Docker, so this is the second part. The last and third part is how to set up our uh, own platform as a service uh, in our own, own uh, Jenkins environment for our application. Okay, so this is a slogan for today. Containerization is the new virtualization. Um, I want to show you why. Sorry. <laughs> At QA, where we are using the term TI architecture. The architecture of the technical infrastructure. The TI architecture describes all parts of hardware and software system is need to run our application. This includes from, from bottom up the hardware, uh, bare metal or, or uh, uh, virtual, uh, virtualized, um, the server, the memory, the network uh, equipment is the basic part of a, of a TI architecture. The next step is the system software our operating system or runtimes like Java or .NET. Services, uh, server, database server, web application server, or, or other runtimes, and libraries you need to run your application. At the top here are the application packages. That what we are coding here, we are doing, our jar, or so, so ever. Very important thing is on the right side the protocols, remote and local. The communication between the layers here, JDBC, SSH, or what else? 
spot why I'm telling you that. It's not Docker. Um, the challenge to run and, 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 and ship complex TI architectures is, is, can be very hard. Um, our software, uh, you see in every, every, every day, is, is, uh, is becoming more and more complex. So distributed components, uh, different programming languages, uh, different frameworks, different versions, um, different hardware. We have our developer notebook in, at, at our offices. We have testing systems, our CE server, QA server, or public or private cloud systems. And finally, our software is run in a customer data center in USA or Germany or worldwide. And our software has to work in every environment. And this is this is a difficult and, and it's in the reality it's man powered. It's it's um, you have you have one person which set up your notebook with your your uh, developer settings. You have an sysadmin at the at your at your company which set up who set up the the server. And Docker is one solution for this problem. Docker is a tool to build and ship and run applications. Three. Docker offers you a standard way for deliver boxes with your application, with standard properties. It's named the Docker container. It's like a cargo container. Um, we can ship our software like a cargo container around the world the same properties. Everybody who you knows Docker can run a Docker container. The software developers can create these boxes with the application and all dependencies and deliver these boxes to operation guys. The so sysadmins have to know the content of the boxes. So you have to know the standard properties of a Docker container. Um, so you only handle it, put it in, your, in, in, in the host, and, and run. The developer know the application. The sysadmins know their hardware and the configuration and the Linux under the, uh, under the Docker. And there is an important separation of concerns with, with, with Docker. Um, developers worry about inside the box. Sys admins worry about outside the box, the environment, the runtime environment. And this is the idea behind Docker. Docker is currently the rising star on, on the open source sky. Um, Introduced last year uh, in the Python Conf in March, um, with big interest in the open source community, uh, you see the stars here at, at, at GitHub, and it was introduced from company .cloud. It's a, a pass company, um, but the success said, okay, um, make your own company, uh, Docker Inc. Um, uh, in early June, there is, was released the, the first version, the stable version of Docker. For two, uh, since two weeks, there was a, a, a Docker Conf in, in San Francisco. And every magazine, every blogger is writing about Docker, it's a rising star. And it's free, it's open source.
why should we use Docker? Um, the first is most important. It makes it easy to create lightweight, portable, and self-sufficient containers. A Docker container contains everything your application is needs to run. A minimal operating system, all libraries and frameworks, and your application code. Configure once, run everywhere. To run a Docker container, is, is, you need only uh, a Docker runtime is, is required. And every runtime can run a container, the same container. You need one and run for each environment. It can help us to solve the dependency hell. Each container has its own file system, own libraries, uh, frameworks with its version. There are no conflicts. With Docker, we get a huge win for automation and deployments. We will later see the Docker files, uh, cookbooks, um, and this, there are public repositories for for images, for containers we can, we can load from the internet. There is a big and growing ecosystem for tools around Docker. And to sum it up, we can say the Docker are perfect for continuous integration, continuous delivery, for test our applications, build our services, run our services, and finally build our own path. If we talk about Docker, we should know some Docker terms. The first is, is image. Docker images are the built component of Docker. An image is a read-only template with your application. An example, an image could contain a Ubuntu operating system, a Apache with your, with your web application installed. And images are used to start a container. You can create these images yourself or you take a uh, downloading existing image, uh, image from the Docker Hub repository. So repositories of Docker Hub or private repositories uh, is, is a big name of this or a registry are the distribution component of Docker. Docker registries store images. So repositories can be private or, or public in the cloud, or you can use your own uh, in-house repository, which is completely private. Um, you can use it too. Container are the run component of Docker. A Docker container holds everything that is needed for your application to run. Each container uh, is created from one image, from a static image. You call it and start it, and your container is running with your own file system on top. And containers have a life cycle, so you can run, start it, stop, moved, deleted, killed, like a real server. Short summary, you can build Docker images that hold your application. You can create Docker containers from Docker images to run your application. And you can share your images at the central repositories at Docker Hub. An important term is layer. All uh, containers have multiple layers. There are read-only layers. We use the kernel, Debian, and 
some application layers with Apache and the read-only layers from top to bottom refers parent images. And you put only one piece on top more with every instruction, every, every install, uh, installer you, 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 you start. The state of a container is on top. The writable container, the writable layer, the last layer here. Um, at first, if you start a container, it's empty. Every file you create in your, in your Docker container is stored in this layer, in the last layer. And Docker has a union file system that merges these all together, all read-only layers, and your re rewritable uh, layer from your container. It's like a versioned file system. The next is Docker file. Docker files are the cookbook for your, for your images. You can manually create images with start a container, uh, instruction one, install Apache, install next. Um, you can stop the container and make an image of it. This is way one. Way two is Docker file. And one sample here is um, easy file. Uh, uh, we install here uh, Python. We say on, 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 on top from Ubuntu, our base layer here, um, I'm the maintainer, it's easy, and the next introduction is run. apt-get, update, refresh our repositories, apt-get install all Python uh, packages. We want to mount our directory in our container is a directory on the host, and we give it through the host in the container. We switch into it, and command here uh, we call our bash. Easy file. Show it in the demo. Um, we can we, we we can start this uh, this Docker file and create an image. The last term is linking. It's important to, to run distributed con uh, applications in more containers parallel and on, on one host. We can link containers together, and this allows a secure communication between the containers. There is our database server and our application server. Um, two containers started up linking together, and there's a communication with links. Okay, this was the basics, and now we try a little look under the hood. Docker consists of a uh, server component, the so Docker daemon, and a client component is this user interface. All your instructions on user interface you, you, you write and it's pushed to the server, to the daemon. Docker currently supports a lot of Linux distributions. One requirement is Linux kernel 3.8 or, or higher because Docker does not invent new technologies. It merges known technologies, known features from, from Linux and makes them easy to use. Um, I don't, I'm no sysadmin. I'm a heavy Jenkins user and software architect. I, I never heard before from, from namespaces and control groups and Unix, uh, union file systems with uh, BTRFS. Um, but with Docker, I master of it. I can start everything. It's, it, it, it's easy. Docker makes complex things easy. And 
there are three components which are important. It's a union file system. We talked about it. Um, Docker supports several implementations. Um, you can switch in your definition and your kernel uh, what does it support and which one you want to need. Namespaces and C groups, control groups are very important um, for the running for the running container because uh, they provide the isolated workspace for a container. And and uh, controlling all resources. This is this admin. Um, he can everything uh, look up monitoring in his in, in on his server and can can say oh here is a container um, only low CPU only one megabyte on the network card and yeah sets namespaces and control groups. Last but not least, um, Docker supports s um, several container formats. At first, there was the Linux containers, uh, LLXC. Um, the last version, it's, uh, it's libcontainer. And maybe soon, uh, Solaris Zones as the next container format. Um, Solaris Zones was uh, the insp inspiration of Linux containers. All containers that are running on a host running in the same kernel in Linux. Only the processes inside of a, of a, of a, of a, of a container um, all, all run isolated. It's important. The last slide before the demo, I want to show you the difference between virtual machines and Docker containers. Um, at one of the first slides, I claim Docker's are the future, uh, but the difference is, 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 is easy on the paper. Um, and the, for me, the, important th uh, for the most important thing is is uh, containers are lightweight, more lightweight than virtual machines. Containers have less less overhead. Um, they don't have a complete operating system. Only the required libraries of them of it. So Docker starts no application operating system. It only starts the processes in a container on the host OS on, 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 on the Docker host. And containers are s small in storage, not four or five gigabytes as virtual machines. Um, of the layer system we have is, every layer can be the small, is um, the core OS, a uh, mini Linux distribution. You can start with it. So it's, Five MBs, and yeah, this means very fast startup and less performance and resource overhead more, uh, as a as a virtual machine. Okay, let's start with a short demo. I hope. I can switch here. Yes. And I have here. I have here um, a Linux system, Docker installed, and we can do now the hello world. And I should be root. Okay. You stop the time? Less than a second. What happened? 
Docker run BusyBox Echo Hello World. BusyBox is a small Linux distribution. I started the image and with the with the command with the uh, um, with the command echo hello world. And what happened in, in, in the background? Docker look up for the image BusyBox. It, here it was local on my, on my it comes from the local local notebook. Um, when not, you can it's, you pull it from the from the repository, make a download, and is on on the on, on my notebook and can start it. Look up the image. Starting start the container, allocated a file system, mount my read write layer, allocate a network interface, set an IP. Execute my command, my echo, captures and print the output here on my, my putty console. And the container stops because the process in the container stopped. Eight steps in yeah. 20 milliseconds. If it uses uh, the virtual machine, yes, it's one minute. It's nice. Let us start an application. I have, mm, I have a little application here. And we want to see it later, the next demo. It's an application. Oh, sorry. It's not on my local disk. It's version 9. Okay, this image has a application, a application server, Tomcat application server with a web application. And it started up here in nine seconds. And, sorry, it's the, it's the wrong tab. And here is the web application. It's a little application from the kindergarten of my son. Um, there is every year a big flea market and uh, I make the software for the counter. So the mummies and daddies don't need paper. They can on her iPad, on her side iPad, uh, check the sums on the counter. Okay. This is a web application. And if I stop it, the container will stop. If I want to run this application as daemon, it's easy, one parameter, more. And I get a hash. And can see, okay, it's running. I want to check it. Yeah, it's running. And now we stopped. To build an, an image, I can it's a little bit longer. We show the, um, I show the Docker file, and it's on my local machine here. And this is the instruction. Oh, it's always huge. Should I? You can. Now you can hope. You can better see it. Um, 
I run the build with a Docker file, and you see uh, Docker start step by step every instru in, 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 in instruction, and it's it's done. It's um, you see it's cached because. Um, my internet connectivity here is not so good, and, and if you if you want to download this, it's 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 um, yeah. We name we, we we take it from the cache. Okay. Now I have the con the image here in my container. Okay. Set. Demo. Okay. Now we know all Docker basics to start with the first integration with Docker and and Jenkins um, as build slaves. This slide shows uh, Jenkins infrastructure with some subcomponents. On the left side, there is our Jenkins master, and with some slaves. And what Docker can change it is, is um, the Linux slaves here. Is um, we, we want to have dynamic. We want to have only start a slave. If we need, we need it in our job. And the workflow can be um, developer look. Uh, developer looks for a base image in a public or private repository. He customizes this image according to his requirements, pushes it back in the repository, and the Jenkins administrator defines at the configuration. Uh, uh, Jenkins cloud, uh, the Docker cloud, of, based on this image, and we can define Jenkins jobs for this slave. If you run a job, Jenkins starts a defined image as a container, runs a job inside the container, and stops the container. And because the Jenkins community is one of the most active, there is a Jenkins plugin for this workflow, the Docker plugin. And the key features are provisioning a slave, run a single job, tear down, and commit the container. The requirements uh, of this is, is like a new standard a slave in, 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 in Jenkins. You need a SSH server, you need a user to for, for, for connectivity, and you need a runtime, uh, Java, Java runtime. Um, if you want to start with a, with a local, on your local machine, there is, a, a, um, yeah, we can read it here, here's a, a ready-made Jenkins slave. And you see, here is the Docker file. Um, daemon, SSH daemon, Jenkins user, and OpenJDK is installed. And yeah, this is the next demo. Here is my Jenkins. And sorry. Thank you. So now here's the Jenkins. And in the configuration, I can define my Docker host as a cloud server and define the my base image. In my job, I see um, with a tag name, um, 
I uh, will start at, at the my Docker node, and we can start it. And we see here on the left side there is no slave. And in some seconds, Docker is starting a slave. Run our build and stops it. Why should we use dynamic slaves? Um, we have seen a very fast startup. Compared with the Amazon EC2 image, Docker is, starts many times faster. Every job defines, uh, defines an image state. It's run from a, from a definition state, and um, it's a clear container, a clear file system. We have no influence of, of, of old jobs. Parisation is no problem. I can start 1,000 uh, containers per rel. And the so resources are protected. We, we run a job, no, uh, when we run no job, no resources are needed. Only when a slave and a job is starting, it's, uh, the resources are allocated. And last point, DevOps, separation of concerns. Um, developers worried about what's inside the box. Um, say, no, I need my Apache, my, my Maven, my JDK in version six, uh, six or seven or eight. And the sysadmin only have to use and only have to, to configure the, the, the Jenkins. Um, the Docker image comes from the repository. Okay, last part, I want to show a light, how we can use our own lightweight platform as a service infrastructure. Um, why sh when should we use it? Um, we, can, we can't use a commercial paths like CloudBees or App Engine um, because our application has confidential data. We have a complex TI architecture special databases, special runtimes, uh, own compiled server components, integrated uh, closed networks, and, and so on. And, um, but we have to integrate early and often, so we need a scalable automated build and deployment process. And one easy solution for a lightweight path infrastructure is our packaged application was built and tested by a Jenkins job. We have base images, and we fit it with our application. We have the Docker daemon to host and run our application, and we have a Jenkins server which triggers and controls the whole process. Docker makes infrastructure as a code easy. Um, it's so we, we can program our applications, we can program our infrastructure. With, uh, with uh, Docker files, we can set up all, and step for step, we can deploy everything more, an application server, and an application, and we have it here in our Docker. And with Jenkins, we can set up a build pipeline. The so first step is compile, test, package, and push it in our build repository, create apps, packages, our RPMs, push it to an artifact repo, build with a Docker file our Docker images, push it to the Docker repo, pull it from the Docker repo, uh, in, run integrated tests, and deploy test environments, and for accept them tests, and more. And for this is, um, 
one plugin, the Docker plugin, build publish plugin. It's using a Docker file, build uh, an image, and push it to the repository. And the next is the Docker build step plugin. You can define start commands, stop commands uh, in your build job configuration. You get some build variables. If you start a container, you get the IP or the host name, and you can use it in the next step. And this is the last demo. And here is my build pipeline. It's not, sorry. It's not run on my, my notebook um, because internet connectivity, but we have four steps. We have our unit test, we have our Docker build, our integration test, and the deployment. And we can see, it's very easy to build a Docker image. With the plugin, you can say, here is my, um, so this is the name of my image, um, tag it, the Docker file comes from the repository from, from Git or Subversion, and it will be built and, and pushed. And the next step, the integration test step, is running. This image as container starts the integration tests, close the container, the next step, is install the test environment and your test team can start with the work. And your trigger is your subversion or your code repository. And we have seen three plugins, our Jenkins, Docker installation. It's easy, it's lightweight, it's scales for medium projects. Um, yeah, and the future will, in the future we will, will see um, if Docker is the solution for this problem. Okay, thank you. Um,